I was born into this life. I suffered for it. And reaped the rewards. I could tell you that I didn't want it. That I tried to get out. But I got no reason to lie anymore. Life is the only reason I'm still here. We're so small, really. Insignificant. In the grand scheme, one life means so little. You dedicate yourself to a principle. But in the end, it's out of your control. In this world, principles get you killed. You lend a hand, it gets torn off. You hesitate, you die. So you want to save someone? Save yourself. To all my classmates who alienated me because I was different. To anyone who never gave me a chance. To the people who ignored me while I hid behind zeros and ones. Thank you. There's never a moment when you forget. It's there when you fall asleep, and when you wake up. You keep going over the things you should have done. I should have stayed home that day. I should have held on. The agony is always there. Learn to live with it. Because the only thing stronger than regret is hope. There were moments when men's cruelty could not be explained, it had to be seen. The perfect shot pierced our numbness, sent up a flare to save the next generation, and said, this is where we've been. Don't follow. Then there was no one left to eat the warning. The only one left to save was yourself. My earliest memory is war. It was a conflict so complex that it could never be resolved. But this war isn't complicated. Death is still heartbreak. is a kill. Don't play in the dirt, Ethan. It's 
Stop fighting, Ethan. Be polite, Ethan. We can suppress the animal instincts all we want, bury them under layers of polish. But they exist for a reason. When we lived in a genteel fairy tale world, somebody did the dirty work out of sight. But when the fairy tale turned nightmare, Those instincts were the only thing that kept us alive. Where there is life, there is light. The glow of hope. At times it burns brightly. It dwindles and fades. I was never afraid of Cachet the Deathless. I laughed at the fairy tale of this undead phantom. A woman of science would never fear such silliness. But what do we know? Sin. And in the face of such horror, there is no logic. Only faith. I was just a boy when the Soviet Union collapsed. The nation was divided in two. Those with power, those without. At eight years old, I learned the price of weakness. And I vowed never to pay that price again. I became the strong man. I gathered wealth, influence, and power. But nature is indifferent to the hierarchy of men. Once more, she burned my world to ashes, leaving only bitterness and the rage I would need to survive. People don't believe something can happen until it does. Cheerful ignorance of the coming storm. I could see nothing else. When it finally arrived, I felt relief. At least now the danger had taken shape. Now, I had a target. fight along. I will not be welcome in the kingdom of heaven. That fate was never in the cards for a man like me. The Lord had other plans. with God.
life. And that is enough. I was 11 years old the first time I felt the ground shake. My instinct was to leave. But my grandparents wouldn't hear of it. This is our home, they told me. We don't leave. I came to live by that code. Earthquakes, tsunamis, typhoons, they're all part of life here. We accept them. We don't leave. When the evacuation was announced, I rejected it. This wasn't our way. Then I saw them. I understood. This wasn't another disaster. This was a war. Nobody expected a nine-year-old girl from Tokyo to be fascinated by guns. Nobody imagined a 22-year-old university senior would drop out and train for the biathlon. Nobody believed that the daughter of a salaryman could win Olympic gold. And nobody predicted that a necrotic plague would decimate our planet's population. But life is all about the unforeseen. And nobody saw me coming either. I always wanted to be a cop. Thought I could do some good. But the scum on the street kept destroying lives. While I was wrapped up in red tape. senseless laws. The virus stripped all that away, left us to fend for ourselves. And finally, the chains were off. Growing up in Tokyo, you either became a salary man, or you were a waste. If you asked around, it's safe to say I was the latter. They said I lacked self-control. That I shamed my family. So my father sent me off to relatives in the States. Turns out, Americans care a lot more about earnings than honor. Which worked out fine. Until the Zeke showed up. The Japanese decided to evacuate. They didn't have the firepower to fight. But I had special skills. So when everyone else was leaving, I went home. 